Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh This is our group presentation for financial accounting and reporting for This assignment is divided into two parts which are part A and part B Part A is segmental reporting for MFRSA and part B is interim reporting for MFRS 134 Before that, let me introduce our group member we are from AC 220B4G. My name is Titi Nur Nadia Benti Ismail. My name is Nurashkin Binti Muhammad Ali. My name is Nurhuda Binti Jamal. My name is Sayyidatina Umi Kaltum Binti Sai Omar. As your target Berhad is the company that we have choose to be used in this assignment since this company consists both of interim reporting and segmental reporting. So, first of all, let me present the company's background. Aziata Group Berhad is widely known as Aziata, formerly known as TM International Berhad, a Malaysian multinational telecommunications conglomerate with the intensive operation throughout Asia. It is one of the country's largest carriers. Aziata, a mobile telecommunication company, describes itself as an Asia focused multinational. It owns the majority stakes in the telecommunication companies in the Malaysia, Indonesia, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Cambodia, as well as strategic stakes in India and Singapore. This company is one of the largest mobile operators with the customer base of over 240 million up since 2007. For your information, Aziata was founded in 1992. Moreover, Aziata was one of the first company in Malaysia and Sri Lanka to offer the 4G services. As one of the Asia's leading telecommunication groups, Aziata had transformed itself from a housing entity with a portfolio of 4-play mobile assets to a triple core strategy driven business that focused on the digital telco, digital businesses and infrastructure by 2024. In the part A, I'm going to explain about the management approach. Factors to consider in preparing segment reporting, first and foremost, is about the nature of the business activities. The firm engages in the provision of mobile communication and network transmission related to services. It operates through the following segment, which is mobile, infrastructures and others. Azata is also an investment holding company. They manage and operate telecommunications related business and provide management with consultancy, technical and engineering services. Next is about the nature of the production process. Azata operates as a telecommunications company that provides digital telco. The company has controlling interest in mobile operators such as in Malaysia, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh and Cambodia with significant strategic stakes in India and Singapore. As an example, Azeta provides digital telco for Cellcom in Malaysia, SL Azeta in Indonesia and Dialog in Sri Lanka. Next will be the type or class of a customer for the products or services. Azeta provides services to those people from all categories of income, such an example, students, employees, or even anyone who owns the electronic devices will be the targeted customers of Aziata. Last but not least will be the method used to distribute the product or provide the services. Aziata use the telecommunication transmitter tower as the method to distribute and provide their services to their customer. Next will be the type of segment. Azeta use the geographical segment in operating their segment. Azeta primarily provides mobile and infrastructure services and operates in four main geographic areas, which are in Malaysia, Indonesia, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. Next, I'm going to explain about Chief of Decision Making and its responsibility. Dato Ivan Dix is currently known as CEO of Azeta from 1st January 2021. He is responsible for the overall success of Azeta Group Berhad and for making top-level managerial decisions. He is also responsible for communicating on behalf of the companies with the shareholders, government entities and also the public final decisions. Dato Izzadid Idris is also responsible for leading the whole development of the company's short and long-term 
strategies and creating and implementing the company's or organization's vision and missions. There are two process of identifying the reportable and non-reportable segment. First is by using 10% threshold test. Second is by using 75 threshold test. Calculation of the 10% rule can be based on total revenue, total profit or loss, or total assets. If the company uses revenue which includes the external and internal sales as a basis, if the total revenue of all operating segment is more than 10%, then it should be recognized as a reportable segment. Other than that, if the total reported profit or loss is 10% or more of the operating segment, then it should be recognized as reportable segment. In addition, if its assets are 10% or more of the combined assets of all operating segment, then it should be a reportable segment. However, if the total revenue, total profit or loss, or total asset is less than 10%, it should be aggregated or combined with other segment that does not meet the 10% and will be classified as other segment. It will be reportable if the information is significant. After determining the reportable segment, the entity should ensure that the total external revenue attributable to the reportable segment is at least 75% of the entity's total external revenue. When the 75 threshold test does not meet, additional reportable segment should be identified on the basis of the highest external revenue generated among the non-reportable segment until at least 75% threshold test meet. For any operating segment that does not meet the quantitative threshold test, that segment will remain as non-reportable segment and group together as all other segment category. Under 10% rule, Nepal, Cambodia, infrastructure and other can be reported as other segment if this information is significant. This is because after conclude the 10% rule of Nepal, Cambodia, infrastructure and others, the results is exceed the 10% rule. Under 75% rules, combined external sales for Indonesia Malaysia, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka exceeded 75% which is 82.65%. Therefore, the management does not need to identify additional reportable segment. The other four segments which is Nepal, Cambodia, infrastructure and other will remain as non-reportable segment and will be grouped together as all other segment category. This is the new segmentary report by Asia Group Berhad as at 31st December 2020. Segmentary reporting have its own advantages as well as disadvantages. So, let's see what is the advantages of segment reporting. One of the advantages of segment reporting is that to have transparency and better insight. Transparency is the primary benefit of segment reporting. Segment reporting can reveal which areas or segments are profitable or which are drains on the bottom line for businesses that operate in different categories or geographic areas. The second advantage of segment reporting is that to have better prediction of profitability. Segment reporting enables financial statement users to have a better prediction on organization's future profitability, especially when segments are involved in variety of activities. The third advantage of segment reporting is that it can reduce the cost of capital. For your information, apparently, the risk of investment in equity of a company that disclose complete information is lower than the investment in equity of a company that withholds the information. Also, it has better analysis about risk and return of the company. Next, let's we discuss about the disadvantages of segment reporting. The first disadvantage of segment reporting is that it may lead to data manipulation, especially when the company presents its information in way of management-owned format. It gives 
the company leaders more discretion in determining how segment are built and what metrics are reported. They also can pick and choose which metrics to present to the stakeholders in order to send the desired messages. For example, losses in internet division could be grouped with a profit in an unrelated business unit to portray a more accurate picture of performance. Next, the disadvantages of segment reporting is that it emphasizes on the present. In segment reporting, short-term numbers can be overemphasized. For example, a company may establish a separate division for its online work. In earlier days, the division may run a significant deficit. If the company's overall performance outweighs these losses, they may be not reflected in financial statements. However, Breaking out those numbers as a data point via segment reporting can lead to pressure to reduce those losses to enhance short-term earnings. The other disadvantages of segment reporting is that it could lead to some costs being imposed. It will lead to some costs being imposed on an organization where management is less likely to take business risks in particular segment if segment's result is available. Not only that, competitors will have access to the information concerning the segment's profitability. Interim report is a financial report that cover a period less than one year. Now, let's take a look on the basis of preparing the interim report. The basis of interim reporting preparation can be integral, discrete, or combination of two. The integral report is where the interim report is the fraction of annual report. Meanwhile, the discrete method treats interim reporting periods in a separate period. In Asiata Berhad, the interim report prepared quarterly. The reports are prepared on a periodic basis, which is three months for the fourth quarter. For an instance, the basis of preparation of the contents interim financial statement for the year ended 31st December 2020 of the company and the group has been prepared in accordance with Sri Lanka Accounting Standard LKS 34 Interim Financial Reporting. There are two types of accounting policies used in preparing interim report. First, property plan and equipment MFRS 116. Second is intangible item MFRS 138. MFRS 116 define PPE as tangible item that are held used in the production of supply, goods and services or rental to others for administrative purpose. PPE also are expected to be used more than one year. The identity of property, plan and equipment is recognized as asset if and only it is a probable that future economic benefits associated with the item will flow to the entity. If the cost of the item to the entity can be measured reliably. Intangible asset is defined as asset that is non-monetary in nature and without physical substance. Its value being dependent on the rights or benefits that possession confers on the owner. Specifically, MFRS 138 requires that the item arising from shall be recognized and only if an entity can demonstrate all of the following. The feasibility of completing the intangible asset so that it will be available for use or sale. B is intention to complete the intangible asset and use or sell it. C is ability to use or sell the intangible asset. D. How the intangible asset will generate probable future economic benefits. Among other things, the entity can demonstrate the existence of a market for the output of the intangible asset or the intangible asset itself, or if it is to be used internally, the usefulness of the intangible asset. E. The availability of adequate technical, financial and other resources to complete the development and the use or sell the intangible assets. F. Its ability to measure reliably the expenditure attributable to the intangible asset during its development. The time
types of interim reports prepared by Azeta Berhad are quarterly reports. These statements include Statement of Profit and Loss and Other Comprehensive Income, Statement of Financial Position, Statement of Cash Flow, and Statement of Changes in Equity. All of these statements are as at 31st December 2020 and the immediately preceding year 2019. As for the part B, I'm going to explain about the current interim report and comparative interim report for all of the statements such as statement of financial position, statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income, statement of cash flows and last but not least is statement of changes in equity. For the statement of financial position, the current interim report for Azeta Berhad is on 31st December 2020 which the period is from 1st January 2020 until 31st December 2020 while the comparative period is on 31st December 2019 which is from 1st January 2019 until 31st December 2019 Next is for the statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income will be divided into two which is current and cumulative period for the current interim period, report will be on 31st December 2020, which starting from 1st October 2020 until 31st December 2020. As for the cumulative, will be from 1st January 2020 until 31st December 2020. Next, we go for comparative interim. As for the current comparative, will be on 31st December 2019, which starting from 1st October 2019 until 31st December 2019. And cumulative comparative will be on the 1st October 2019 until 31st December 2019. Next, we go for statement of cash flow. Current interim report will be on 31st December 2020, which consists from 1st January 2020 until 31st December 2020. And as for the comparative interim period, will be on 31st December 2019, which starting from 1st January 2019 until 31st December 2019. Last but not least is the statement of changes in equity. Current interim report will be on 31st December 2020, which the period is from 1st January 2020 until 31st December 2020. While for the comparative period is on 31st December 2019, which is from 1st January 2019 until 31st December 2019. Last but not least, this is two adjustment that required in this question. So we decided to make the adjustment about the inventories and account receivable. Therefore, the first adjustment is the cost of inventory as at 31st December 2020 is 141 million six hundred sixty-three thousand. Meanwhile, the net realizable value of inventory is 123 million five hundred fifty-five thousand as at 31st December 2020. The second adjustment is during the current year ending 2020, the trade and other receivable amounted to 4,362,394. As at 31st December 2020, the company estimated that the amount would be only 10% uncollectible by the year end. Apart from that, this is the computation about the first adjustment, which is the inventory. To decide that this, the amount to be reported in the financial position is the lower of the cost or net realizable value. So in this question, the lower one is the net realizable value. So the value of inventory as at 31st December 2020 is 123,555,000. Besides that, this is the computation about account receivable. The gross amount of account receivable multiplied by the 90% collection rate 90% is come from 100% minus 10% uncollectible, we will get 90% of collection rate. Then the, net, then the net amount to be reported is 3,926,155. Therefore, this is the extract of statement of financial position for the year ended 31st December 2020 of Ajata Berhad. The inventories and account receivable have to be reported under the current asset. This is the before and after the adjustment that has been made. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.